And good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Hi, teacher. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, teacher. It's good to see everybody, at least your avatar. If you want to turn on your camera, of course, go right ahead. As long as the internet doesn't break down, feel free to activate your microphone. Say hello if you haven't already. Hello, teacher. Hello. Hi, teacher. Hi, teacher. We're in week six already. Can you believe it? Time flies when you're having fun, right? Hope everything's going well for you guys. Hope your classes are going well. You know, I know some of you mentioned that you perhaps want some or have some questions, um, that maybe you have some questions. Uh, in your other classes, and I offered yesterday, and I still want to offer uh, any assistance. If you guys want to schedule time with me outside of class in the afternoons, uh, let me know. I'll be more than happy to meet with you and address your questions, all right? We don't uh, even have to... Meet if it's a problem, you can just post your questions and we'll try to address some of your questions depending on uh, the nature of the question, depending on what kind of assistance you need. If it's something that I can try to clarify either in a video, we, I can do that. But a lot of times it's helpful for just to have a few minutes to discuss a topic to try to clarify what your doubts are. So in this class, in listening and speaking in Microsoft Teams, I have the space uh, called Lounge, okay? So this is basically just informal conversations where you can post your questions. And if you want to schedule a time with me, uh, this, I think, is the best place to do it. Kind of separate any questions that you have. If they're, for example, grammar, if you have some... Uh, grammar questions, if you want to talk about grammar, we can discuss that, right? If you have questions from your reading class, your culture class, right, just let me know, okay? And uh, again, I would use this lounge space I, I talked about yesterday, uploading a file under files, and uh, there's a spreadsheet, okay? So you guys should be able to access the spreadsheet where you can go in and post your questions. I want to be really formal in the way that you guys ask questions so that we don't miss any questions and that um, that all of us can benefit from the questions that you pose, that you ask. Because probably if you have a question about a grammar point, probably a classmate also has the same question. Okay, so feel free to use this spreadsheet, post it, if we want to, if you guys want to get together in a small group to discuss some of these questions, let me know. Okay, let me know if you want to meet in the afternoons. We can certainly do that. Okay, I have no problem meeting with you guys to try to help uh, address your questions. The main thing is that you're getting help, whether it's from me or from your other teachers, that you're reaching out and you're clarifying your doubts that you have. Don't don't put it off. Don't wait to the last minute. Don't wait until the end of the semester, right? Uh, don't wait, you know, weeks if you have questions because you're you're only going to get more behind if you don't address the questions right away. Okay. I know sometimes grammar can be difficult for a lot of students if you're not used to talking a lot about and thinking about grammar, uh, English grammar, or maybe not even Spanish grammar for that matter. So uh, I know some students find it a challenge to get through some of the topics in grammar. Okay, So make sure that you're getting the help that you need. All right. Thank One of you. The, any any Thank que you so any questions, guys, about accessing the lounge or or getting together, or any any anyone want to make any comments? No, teacher. Thank you. 
No, thank you. All right. Uh, one other thing I wanted to talk about before we get into today's class. To receive your final grade for your performance task, yesterday I asked everyone to evaluate your performance. Okay, so if you haven't done so already, please go into your your uh, your video in YouTube. Group 11 has done that. They have gone in and they have evaluated their performance. They've evaluated the performance by uploading a comment. Okay, and this is what I was asking everyone to do to finalize, to complete the performance task, is to take some of the points that you, uh, you considered when you developed your video and de decide as a team who wants to talk about which points from this list. There are actually two lists. Okay, so... Make sure that you're not all commenting on the same thing, right? The idea is for you as a team to self-evaluate your performance, but each team member talk about different aspects of your performance. You can talk about things that you did well. You can talk about challenges that you faced. You could talk about things that maybe you could have done better. But use this as a guide. These, there are a lot of points here that you can talk about. And there are more points maybe that you can include in your evaluation, all right? But these are the different points that you can talk about when you upload to YouTube your reflection, your evaluation of your team's performance. So when I see these comments, then I go into the gradebook in Teacher Ease, and I will upload your grades once I've seen your uh, your final reflection, your final uh, self-evaluation. All right, so in the case of team uh, group 11, their grades now have been uploaded to teacheries. So please take the time this afternoon to get together with your team. If you haven't done so already, decide who's going to talk about what, and then go in individually and upload your self-evaluation as a comment in YouTube under just under your video of course if you haven't if your video does not appear then uh, you need to send me a message in Microsoft Teams to uh, to upload your group okay to upload your video if I haven't uploaded it it's probably because I was not able to find the video or maybe I wasn't sure which video I should upload okay so make sure that you call the final video something like final video or maybe the title of your presentation some indication that uh, helps me know that this is your your final version try to keep everything in week five because this was last week okay so try to keep everything into week five today we're going to be doing a group activity and uh, so now we're in week six Okay, so anything that you complete today, because we're going to have a group activity, I'm going to ask that you create a folder in your group called week six, because now we're in week six. So everything that you do this week will go into a folder called week six. We want to try to keep organized in our group work, and I think this is the best way is to just to keep folders for each week. Alrighty, my friends, my dear friends. Here we have our first activity today. And first is I want to hear a song. The song for today. Let me see if I can pull it up here. I thought I had it up. Here we go. I think it was Yaisha's. No, that's not it. Yaisha's song. Let's see if I can find it here. Yaisha, do you want to talk about your song? What chose? Why did you choose that that particular song? If you want to activate your microphone and tell us a little bit about what this song means to you, or or why you chose this particular song. Um. Good morning. 
Um, I, I chose this song because it talks about um, the Latin people being deported from United States and also talks about the African American people not having freedom. Yeah, it's a really timely song. It's very current. There's a huge issue if you've been following the news in the United States. A lot of African Americans have been having some social problems and not having equal rights and not being treated fairly by police officers. And yeah, so this, this song is about that. So let's listen to this song.
All right, guys, what do you think now? I, I posted a question in the chat. This was a really good song. It's a very direct song. And when I say direct, I'm referring to two types of language. When you guys are choosing your songs and you're, you're looking at the lyrics of the song, there's basically two ways that uh, a writer, an artist, can write lyrics. They can write it literally or they can write it figuratively. Literally and figuratively. Right? So if we look at some of these lyrics, let's look at this set of lyrics here. Which are considered literal? Which are considered figurative? What do you think? And what does that mean? What would it mean? For example, the first line, CEO of the free world now. What does CEO mean? What does that mean? Any ideas? And you can unmute your mic or you can post in the chat. You can do either or, or both. What do you think? Uh, CEO is like the, um, the boss of an... I don't know, say, uh, of a company or mm -hmm. maybe like a person who is uh, very important in the company, something like that. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. And it's actually an abbreviation for three words. You're, you're right, uh, Fernanda. But what, what do you think those initials, CEO, what do you think they stand for? Like a, the boss of a, of a company. What do you think those initials stand for? Any any ideas? Um, no. <laughs> Chief Executive Officer. Okay, this is a formal title of big companies, usually. And they hire a CEO. The shareholders, those who have stock, right? Have They, they have stock like a big corporation they're going to elect they're going to choose they're going to vote and they'll they'll choose somebody for this position called chief executive officer and a chief executive officer is going to be the person in charge it's going to be the boss of a big company all right these are formal titles for large companies but in this case ceo of the free world now what do you who who is this addressed to to whom is the artist writing this to do you think i don't know like a leader of the of the free world all right the leader of the free world so any ideas who this might this person might be Take a guess. Take a wild guess. It's because the um, United States is like a free country, but just to, to white people, like saving in the video. Mm -hmm. Who do you think the CEO of the free world is? Who is this person? Who's the president of the United States? Anybody know? Trump? That's right. So he's talking, he's saying the CEO of the free world now. This is directly to President Trump. This is a, an appeal to the president, the current president of the United States. Okay, this is a very direct message there is no uncertain under no uncertain terms is he talking about anyone else this is directly to the president of the united states 
The second line, build your walls up high and wide. Now, what's significant about build your walls up high, high and wide? Is this literal? Is this figurative? What is he referring to? Any any ideas? I, I think literally and sarcastic. Um, mm -hmm. Like the author is being kind of sarcastic or referring to directly to the person. And that's what I think. And and so in what sense is it uh, is it literal, Adan? What makes it literal? What, can you tell us the story behind it? What's what's the what's the artist referring to? Well, what I think is that uh, because uh, maybe those people have not the freedom and they are like uh, like saying. Um, like I don't know how how to explain it uh, or how to say it. Um, uh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. Or anyone else? What can? What's what's the artist referring to when he says? And think literally first. And we'll talk about figurative here in a minute. But let's talk literally. We're talking about Trump, right? CEO. This is not literal. This CEO, he's talking figuratively. But he's basically saying you're you're in charge. Trump, you're in charge of the free world. Okay. Now the second line, build your walls. What is the artist referring to literally? Literally about build your walls when he's talking about to Trump. I think he's talking about the wall so that Mexicans can can go into the United States. Right. If you're if you follow American politics and pro in Mexican politics because I'm it's it's come up as well. President Trump from the beginning has mentioned wanting to build a wall, a physical wall, a real wall between Mexico and the United States. And he still talks about it. He's, he's talked about it for four years, talking about building a wall, literally a wall between two, the two countries. All right? And so that's the literal address here. Build your walls up high and wide. That's the literal. What figuratively, what does it mean to build a wall? How, how can you explain what the figurative meaning is behind build your walls up high and wide. Any ideas? If I if I say to to you or to anyone, if I say, oh you're you're building a wall, don't create walls between two things or what am I referring to? What's What's the literal meaning of this figurative idea of building a wall? What do you think? Maybe someone has said to you, don't build a wall between our relationship. What does that mean? Don't build a wall between you and your teachers. Uh, talking about problems. Problems, right? Could be based on problems. It could mean just ignoring, right? To build a wall means you there's separation. You're separating yourself, let's say, from your friends. If you say, don't build a wall between you and your friends. Don't build a wall between you and your teachers means don't create separation. Don't not communicate to your teachers, to your friends, to your family. Break down the walls. If you say break down the walls, that means communicate and come closer to your friends, your family, whatever it is, your job, right? So to build a wall figuratively means to add separation between two things, and or it could mean to ignore uh, someone else, 
right? So in this case, build your walls. The artist is saying build your walls up high and wide means you're ignoring certain people, right? Or you're ignoring certain problems. Don't build walls. So it's actually figurative and literal at the same time in this particular example. Build your walls up high and wide saying you're just ignoring the problems that exist in the United States. You're ignoring them. And you're not doing anything about those problems. You're not trying to solve the problems. You're ignoring them. So this is a really powerful line because it actually, it's literal because he has said and to some degree completed certain wall, a, a physical wall between two countries. But even more importantly than that, he's ignoring a lot of other problems that are going on in the United States. And of course, it's all related, right? But this is why this message, this song is really strong because this is an direct appeal to the President of the United States. This is a song that's basically saying, it's like as, as if the artist wrote a personal letter to the President of the United States. And if you look at these lyrics, okay, we're not going to go through all the lyrics here, but I want to... I want you to start thinking about the lyrics of the songs that you've chosen and the songs that we talk about in class. And I want you to ask yourself, are these lyrics literal or are they figurative? Figurative language can be metaphors. It could be uh, satire. right? It could be personification. We'll talk about different types of figurative language. But basically, figurative language means that it actually says one thing, but it means something else. And it has a lot of significance. All right? Here, is that the look of freedom? Is that the sound of freedom? This is figurative. What does freedom look like? What does freedom sound like? Okay, this is... It's uh, figurative, but I think it's, it's pretty straightforward. What does it look like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like? Because it's plain to see a man's integrity. This is literal, very direct. When I say this is a direct song, there's a lot of literal language. This is like if someone just wrote a letter almost to the president. By the way, he treats those he does not need. Very direct, strong language. And that's what makes this song very powerful besides the music behind it, right? Right. Okay, so a very good song, Yaisha. Thank you for sharing that song with us. And when you guys are looking at your songs, take a look and really try to dig deep into the meaning of the song and think about the language, the song, the lyrics. Is it literal? And is it, or is it figurative? Sometimes, as we saw today, it can actually be both. That's when it's really powerful when the same words can be literal and they can also be figurative and still have true meaning to what's being said. All right, guys. Today, what I'd like for us to do, I want to do two things. All right, the first thing I want to try to do here is uh, I want to break into our groups. Now, this week, we're going to create new groups. And I've posted our new groups or our new teams, okay, so uh, I've posted our new groups for this week or for today in Microsoft Teams. And here are the teams. I don't know if you can see my screen or if you can access this. Take a look and see if you can find your team. We should have 10 teams. And we should have groups of four with the exception of team one who has five members. All right. Can everyone find their team? If you cannot find your team, please let me know. Okay, don't go into your teams yet. I just want to make sure everyone knows which team you're in or which group that you're in. Okay. Today in your groups... We're going to look at a reading, 
and let me open this document up. This is the Word document. This might help if you want to download this on your computer so that you can access it in your Teams. But uh, the first activity today, I want to focus on actually reading out loud, pronunciation. And when you guys are practicing your, your podcast, your weekly podcasts, and you're working in your teams and you're, you're speaking, when we speak, I want us to really focus on intonation, spacing, how we articulate the words, how we pronounce the words. Now, when I speak about intonation, some of you like to sing. Some of you are musicians. Some of you like to sing. You, you, let, you enjoy singing. You might have heard of the word intonation. Now, what do I mean by intonation? Oh, well, I have heard that intonation is when you pronounce or when you, when you stress a word more than the other words in order for you to or in order for the 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 person who is listening to it uh to uh to to know that uh, you are referring to that word like uh, specifically uh or something like this all right, so word stress certainly is very important. All right, I'm going to type that into the chat. So if I were to ask you, how do you pronounce this person's name? How would you pronounce? Go ahead and pronounce this word. Again, feel free to open, turn on your mic just so I can hear some of you or all of you. How do you pronounce this person's name that I've typed into the chat? Robert. 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 How many? Robert. Mm -hmm. How many syllables in this word, in this person's name? Two. 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 Is it strong, weak, or weak, strong? It's strong and weak. There's two syllables. Is it Robert or Robert? Strong, weak, or weak, strong? It's uh, strong and weak. It's strong and Exactly. Strong and then weak. So it's Robert. Robert. It's not Robert. 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 No, it's Robert. All right, so Robert. So word stress can obviously be on the syllables. Each word has one or more syllables. All right, um, let's look at this word. How do you pronounce this word that I just typed into the chat? How many syllables? Uh, four, four syllables. Four syllables. Which which syllable do you stress? Uh, no, uh, the second uh, the second syllable. Syllable. All right. So go ahead and pronounce. Try to pronounce this word. How do you pronounce this word? Uh, synonymous. Everybody else? Go ahead. Synonymous. 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 Everyone? Synonymous. 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 Again? Synonymous. 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 When you find a word that's hard to say, you need to say it over and over, out loud, and hear yourself say it. Synonymous, 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 synonymous. Because 
pronunciation is like it's muscle memory. It's like lifting weights. It's like you have to form the sound, and it's a physical act. And if you're not used to pronouncing a certain word, it's just it's going to take practice. You has to you just have to do it. You have to actually. You can't think about oh okay I think I'm thinking about how to pronounce this word. Okay I got it. No, you have to actually do it. Right? Synonymous. Synonymous. So the best way, and I do this for Spanish too. Right? You say it out loud over and over and over until it just becomes automatic. But you need to try to make sure that you're pronunciating it correctly, right? Otherwise, you're going to learn it incorrect, incorrectly. All right, so stress. All right, word stress, very important, stressed. We can also stress a sentence. Now, can everyone see the document that I have on my screen? Is it is it big enough? Yes. Yeah. All right, just look, yeah. let's look at the first sentence. Robert Kappa is a name that has, for many years, been synonymous with war photography. Now, Robert Kappa is a name that has Robert Kappa is a name that has which words am I stressing now? Not so much syllables now. Let's look at words of a sentence. Robert Kappa is a name that has for many years been synonymous with war photography. Which words Am I stressing in this sentence? Synonymous? All right, I'm going to read the sentence again. I want you to select which words you think that I'm stressing more in this sentence, okay? Robert Kappa is a name that has for many years been synonymous with war photography. Name? 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 Any uh, others? Many years. I'll read it again. Robert Kappa is a name that has for many years been synonymous with war photography. Robert. Robert. Name. Many years. Nice. All right. Robert Kappa is a name that has for many years, many years, it's kind of hard to hear, but many years, I am stressing a little bit many, but I'm actually stressing years more, slightly more than many. Many years, many years. The other way, if I stressed many, it would be like many years, which, which oh, I... Yeah. Yeah, which I could stress, but not necessarily in this example. Robert Kappa is a name that has for many years, many years, been synonymous. Well, synonymous? It's been synonymous with war photography. With war photography. Am I stressing more war or photography? War photography. War. Uh, war. Photography? It's slightly, I'm stressing photography slightly more than war. I am stressing war a little bit more than with, for example, right? But war photography. War photography, because photography, in this case, I, I want to stress the, the noun. Photography. What kind of photography? War photography. War photography. War photography is blah, 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 blah. War photography. So photography is slightly being stressed more. Now, this is not, obviously, there's not one way that you can read these sentences. But when you guys are practicing your reading, and today we're going to work in our teams, and our our task is to take this te this text that I'm sharing with you here, Divide up the text. Each member of your four or five member team choose one paragraph, one or two paragraphs. And as a team, read this text. But it's not just reading the text. It's reading it aloud 
and practicing your pronunciation, of course, but but more importantly, your pauses, your stress, and your intonation. Now, stress and intonation, there's a slight difference. And let me give you an example now of some intonation. Robert Plant is a name that has, for many years, been synonymous with war photography. Robert Kappa, let's just take that, those two words. Robert Kappa, what can you say about my intonation of Robert Kappa? Mm. You have more intonation with the word Robert and then Kappa, like Kappa. <laughs> Yeah, it's in, and it's not so much more, but it's what? Robert Kappa, Robert Kappa, for your singers out there, what am I doing with my voice? Robert Kappa, what am I doing with my voice? Is a name, is a name that has for many years been synonymous with war photography. What am I doing with my voice? That's a little bit different than stress. La está modulando. And how do you say that in English? Very good in Spanish. What am I doing? I don't know. Now, what if I say this, Robert Kappa? Robert Kappa. I'm changing my intonation. What am I changing? I'm changing the pitch, the tone. Sometimes I speak lower, sometimes I speak higher. My voice goes up and down. Intonation refers to the pitch. Right? Do you speak high or do you speak low? When we ask a question, what's typical when we ask a question? Robert Kappa? Do you know Robert Kappa? What am I doing with my intonation at the end of the question? Uh, you are changing the, your voice at the end of the question. In what way? Robert Kappa? You know Robert Kappa? What am I doing at the end of the question? And this is typical. When you ask a question, what do you do with the intonation? Does the voice go up or does the voice go down? Go up. It, it goes up. You're taking yeah. listening and speaking? Is that a question or a statement? You're taking listening and speaking? Question. It's a question. What about now? You're taking listening and speaking. Is that a question? No. 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 How do you know? I only changed one thing. I changed what? What did I, what did I change? Intonation. Change my intonation. Yeah, very good. Excellent. All right. Congratulations. Good. Right? You're taking listening and speaking? Wow. That's a question. Ah, you're, you're taking listening and speaking. Like, okay. You didn't know what you were taking it. Now you know. All right. So, intonation, word stress, pauses. I want you to practice as a team. Take a look at this reading. Divide it up between the groups. Who's going to say what? And I would like for you to record your live session, okay? Just as in the past, open up a live session, record the whole thing. Don't worry about making mistakes, all right? Try to practice maybe a couple of times. Try to go through and read. But I want you to pay close attention. Don't make it sound like you're reading. Look at the second paragraph. Born in Hungary in 1913 as Friedman Andre Orno, Kappa was forced to leave his native country after his involvement in anti-government protests. See, I'm not reading it super fast. I'm trying to read it 
and you can read it slower than that, all right? You can read it as however slow you want, okay? But pay close attention to the words and your pronunciation and your pauses. Kappa had originally wanted to become a writer, but after his arrival in Berlin, had first found work as a photographer. He later left, he later, notice my intonation, he later left Germany to move and moved to France due to the rise in Nazism. He tried to find work as a freelance journalist, and it was here that he changed his name to Robert Kappa, mainly because he thought it, could, it would sound more American. Right? Now, I'm making mistakes, but I'm trying to pay close attention to my intonation. It's okay if you make mistakes. I'm more concerned about your pauses between sentence to sentence, right? A sentence, when you see a period, that's why we have punctuation. So that when you're reading it, whether it's aloud or to yourself, it says, hey, take a breath. Relax. Take a break. And then come back and begin the next sentence. All right, so this is our first activity. Um, I want to uh, give you some time now to, uh, to complete this task and go ahead and break into your rooms. Go ahead and download this document. I've included some additional links here. There's really not, it's not necessary to access all of the, that information. Uh, the main thing is to begin reading the text. But if you're interested in this person, uh, there are some links here to learn more about, about him. Okay. Let's go ahead and begin the activity, guys, and let's come back. It's 8.47. Let's try to come back at 9.20, 20 20 minutes after 9. And, uh, again, practice, take a read-through, decide who's going to say what, and then record yourself reading aloud uh, this, this reading. All right, any questions, guys? No, did you? No, did you? All right, let's go ahead and break into our rooms and we'll come back at 9.20. Robert Kappa is a name that has for many years been synonymous with war photography. Born in Hungary in 1930, uh, for that, 90, as of what? <laughs> 1930? Ah, uh, see, 1930 as okay. Friedman, Andre Erno. Kappa was forced to leave his native country after his involvement in anti government protests. Kappa had originally wanted to become a writer, but after his arrival in Berlin, had first found work as photographer. He later left Germany and moved to France due to the rise in Nazism. He tried to find work as freelance journalist and it was here that he changed his name to Robert Kappa, mainly because he thought it would sound more American. In 1936, after the breakout of the Spanish Civil War, Kappa went to Spain and it was here over the next three years that he built his reputation as a war photographer. It was here too in 1936 that he took one of his most famous pictures, the death of a loyalist soldier. One of Kappa's most famous quotes was, if your pictures aren't good enough, you are not close, close enough. And he took his attitude of getting close to the action to an extreme. His, photo his photograph, uh, The Dead of a Loyalist Soldier, is a prime example of this as Kappa captures the very moment the soldier falls. However, many have questioned the authenticity of this photograph, claiming that it was staged. When World War II broke out, Kappa was in New York, but he was soon back in Europe covering the War of Life magazine. Some of his most famous work was created on 6 June 1944, when he swam ashore with the first assault on Omaha Beach in the D-Day invasion of Normandy. 
Kappa, armed only with two cameras, took more than 100 photographs in the first hour of the landing, but a mistake in the dark room during the drying of the film destroyed all but eight frames. It was the images from these frames, however, that inspired the visual style of Steven Spielberg's Oscar winning movie, Saving Private Ryan. When Life magazine published the photographs, they claimed that they were slightly out of focus, and couple later used this as a title of his autobiographical account of the war. Kappa's private life was no less dramatic. He, ha he was friend to many of Hollywood's directors, actors, and actresses. In 1943, he fell in love with the wife of actor John Austin. His affair with her lasted until the end of the war and became the subject of his war memoirs. He, he was at one time lover to actress Ingrid Bergman. The relationship finally ended in 1946 when he refused to settle in Hollywood on, and went off to Turkey. In 1947, Kappa was among a group of photojournalists who founded Magnum Photos. This was a cooperative organization set up to support photographers and help them to retain ownership of the copyright to their work. Kappa went on to document many other wars. He never attempted to glamorize war thought, but to record the horror. He once said the desire of, of any war photographer is to be put out of business. But that, as he had life, after promising not to photograph any more wars, he accepted an assignment to go to Indochina to cover the first Indochina War. On May 25, 1954, Kappa was accompanying a French regiment when he left his jeep to take some photographs of the advance and stepped on a landmine. He was taken to a nearby hospital, still clutching his camera, but was pronounced dead on arrival. He left behind him a testament to the horror, horrors of war and a standard for photojournalism that few others have been able to reach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kappa's legacy has lived on thought and 1966 his brother Cornell founded the International Fund for Concerned Photography uh, in his honor. There is also a Robert Kappa gold medal which is given to the photographer who publishes the best photographic reporting from abroad with a evidence of exceptional courage, but perhaps his greatest legacy of all are the haunting images of the human struggles that he captured. Well, I think that everyone read good, I think. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, so in this call we were present just Laura Gabriela Esparza Ramos, Silvia Guadalupe Aguilera Chavez, and Juana Polina Romo Carrión. Tania was not here, just to mention it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop the recording. Robert Capa is the, a name that has for many years been synonymous with a war in photography. Um, number two, born in Hungary. In 1913, was Freeman Henry Erno. Kappa was forced to live in a country after involvement in anti-government protests. 
Kappa had originally wanted to become a greeter, but after his arrival in Berlin, had first found work in, as photographer. He later left Germany, had moved to France to the rise in Nazism. He tried to find work and as freelance journalist, and it was her that is changed. His name to Robert Kappa, mainly because he thought it will sound more American. In 1936, after the breakup of the Spanish Civil War, Kappa went in Spanish, and it was here over the next three years that he built his reputation as a war photographer. It was here too in 1936 that he took one of his most famous pictures, the death of a loyalist soldier. One of Kappa's most famous quotes was, if your pictures aren't good enough, you're not close enough. And he took his attitude of getting close to the action to an extreme. His photograph, the death of a loyalist soldier, is a prime example of, he, of this as a Kappa captures they, the very moment the soldier falls. However, many have questioned the, the authenticity of this photograph, claiming that it was staged. Um, when World War II broke out, Kappa was in New York. He was soon back in Europe covering the war for Life mag magazine. Some, some of his most famous work was created on 6 June of 1944, when he swam as with the first assault on Omaha Beach and the DD Day, the invasion of Normandy. Kappa, armed only with two cameras, took more than 100 photographs in the first hour of the landing. But a mistake in the darkroom during the dying of the film destroyed all but eight frames. It was a Images from these frames, however, the, that inspired the visual style of Steven Spielberg's Oscar winning movie Saving Private Ryan. When Life magazine published the photographs, they claimed that they were slightly out of focus. And Kappa later used this as the title of his autobiographical account of the war. Kappa's private life was not less dramatic. He was friend to many of Hollywood directors, actors, and actresses. In 1943, he fell in love with the wife of the actor John Austin. His affair with her lasted until the end of the war and became the subject of his war memoirs. He was at one time lover to a actress Ingrid Bergman. The relationship finally ended in 1946 when he refused to Sydney in Hollywood and went off to Turkey. In 1946, Kappa was among a group of four journalists who founded Magnum Photos. This was a cooperative organization set up to support photographers and help them to retain ownership of the company to their work. Um, the number seven, Kappa went on to document many other awards. He never attempted to glamorous world trough, but to record the horror, he once said, the desire of many war photographers is to be put out of business. Uh, Kappa died as he had lived, after promising not a photograph any more wars. He accepted an assignment to go to Indochina to cover the first Indochina war. On May 25 of, 19, of 1954, Kappa was accompanying a French regiment when he left his skip to take some photographs of the advance and stepped on a land on a landmine, he was taken to an army hospital, still clutching his camera, but was pronounced dead, dead on arrival. He left behind his him state 
He left behind him a statement to the horrors of war and a standard of photojournalism and that few others have been able to reach. Um, Kappa's legacy has lived on through and in 1966, his brother, Cornell, founded the International Fund for Concerned Photography in his honor. This is also a Robert Kappa gold medal, which is given to the photographer who publishes the best photographic reporting from abroad with evidence of exceptional courage. But perhaps his greatest legacy of all are the hunting images of the human struggles that he captured. So, well, is then. Is that final just a couple? Sí, ¿verdad? Sí. Okay, that's right. Um, I think it's uh, for biography, for this person now, for Robert Kappa. Um, ¿Algo que quieran decir? Sobre lo que entendieron. Someone. I don't want to say anything. <laughs> yeah, it's only information for this person. It's not about for any other things. I only heard Steven Spielberg and that's it. <laughs> yeah, me <it's>, too. Uh... <laughs> like, ah, oh, wow. Oh, Robert Kappa is a name that has for many years been synonymous with war photography. Born in Hungary in 1913 as Friedman Ender Erno, Kappa was forced to leave his native country after his involvement in anti-government protests. Kappa had originally wanted to become a writer but after his arrival in Berlin, had first found work as a photographer. He later left Germany and moved to France due to the rise in Nazism. Uh, he tried to find work as a freelance journalist, and it was here that he changed his name to Robert Kappa, mainly because he thought it would sound more American. In 1936, after the breakout of the Spanish Civil War, Kappa went to Spain, and it was here over the next three years that he built his reputation as a war photographer. It was here, too, in 1936 that he took one of his most famous pictures, the deed of a loyalist soldier. One of Kappa's most famous quotes was, if your pictures aren't good enough, you are not close enough. And he took his attitude of getting close to the action to an extreme. His photograph, The Deed of a Loyalist Soldier, is a prime example of this as Kappa captures the very moment the soldiers fall. However, many have questioned uh, the audacity of this photograph claiming that it was staged. Yeah. <laughs> you want to yes, if you want. Now, who's next? Me. Okay. When World War II broke out, Kappa was in New York, but he sent back in Europe, um, comparing the war for life amazing. Some of his most fam famous work was created on 6 June uh, 90, I don't know how to say that, when his one ashore with the first assault on Ohama Beach in the D-Day invasion of Normandy. Kappa armed only with two cameras 
two, took more than 100 photographs in the first hour of the landing, but a mistake in the dark, dark room. During the drying of the film, destroy all uh, but eight frames. It was images from these fr frames, however, that inspired the visual style of seven Spielberg's Oscar winning mov movie saving private Ryan when life Mason published the photograph. They claim that um, inspired the visual style of Steven Spielberg's Oscar winning movie, Shaving Pirata Ryan. When Life um, Magazine published the photographs, they claiming that they were slightly of of focus and capillated used this as the title of his autobiographic account of the war. Esmas or Sestai? Kappa private life was not less dramatic. He was friend to many of Hollywood's direction actors and actresses. In 1943, he fell in love with the wife of actor John Austin. His affair with her lasted until the end of the war and became the subject of his war mem memoirs. He was at one time lover to actress Ingrid Ber Berman. Their relationship finally ended um, in 1946 when he refused to settle in Hollywood and went off to Turkey. And who want to read? Me. Okay. In 1947, Kappa was among a group of photojournalists who founded Magnum Photos. This was a corporate organization set up to support photographers and help them to reign ownership of the copyright to their work. Kappa went on the document, document many other words. He never attempted to glamorize Watro, but to record the horror. He once said, the, the desire of any war photographer is to be put out of business. Um, Kappa died as he had lived after promise promising not to photograph any more wars. He accepted an assignment to go to Indochina to cover the first Indochina war. On May 25, 1954, Kappa was accompanying a French regiment when he left his jeep to take some photographs of the advance and stepped uh, on a landmine. He was taken to a nearby hospital, still clutching his camera, but was pronounced dead on arrival. He left behind him a testament to the horrors of war and a standard for photojournalists that few others have been able to reach. And Kappa's legacy has lived on top and in 1966. His brother Cornell founded the International Fund for Concern 
photograph in his honor. There's there is also a rubber capable medal which is given to the photographer who publishes the best photographic reporting from abroad with evidence of exceptional courage. But for perhaps his greatest legacy of all are the haunting image of the human struggles that he captured. Okay, so now we are going to read it one more time or, or what? I don't know. So I remember that the teacher says that we can read it um, many times, but I don't know if you want that we read it one more time or, or no. And what are we going to do next? I don't know. I think we only have to to read. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but mm, his the teacher says, uh, "Aquí ahora tenemos que regresar." Ah, I don't know. I don't remember. A las nueve veinte. Ah, okay. okay. Um, we can read it. One more time, no? Or what do you think? If you yes. want, we can. Yes. Okay. Mm. Who's first? Los mismos o ahora diferentes, no? Uh, si quieren, ahora yo empiezo. Okay. 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 Robert Capa. Robert Capa is a name that has for many years been synonymous with war photography. Born in Hungary in 1913, as Frema Andre Erno, Kappa was forced to leave his native country after his involvement in anti-government pro protests. Kappa had originally wanted to become a writer, but after his arrival in Berlin, in Berlin, he had first found work as a photographer. He later left Germany and moved to France due to the right to the rise in Nazis. He tried to find work as a freelance journalist.
pues nos tocaría de tres. Ajá. Ok, so let's, um, let's check the paragraphs and if Alonso no viene, we will have to choose three paragraphs as you said. Okay. A ver, do you have your document? Yes. yes. A ver, number two, who wants the number two? <laughs> I want number three, but number I don't want number two. <laughs> pues, so I choose number four, and, or, Cielo, what, what did you choose? Um, five. Five? <laughs> five. Uh, yeah, I chose. No han escogido el dos, verdad? No. <laughs> well, I choose. <laughs> I choose number three, uh, seven, and eight. Okay. Three, seven, eight. Uh, Entonces, yo es five, nine, y ¿cuál otro? El one. <laughs> ah, bueno. <laughs> a ver, a ver, a ver. So, a ver, number one, Cielo, number two, me, number three, Yaisha, Yaisha. Number four, number four, me, number five, Cielo, number six, uh, who to six? Ah, me. <laughs> number seven, Yeisha, number eight, Yeisha, and number nine, Cielo. Yes? Yes. So let's start. Number one. Um, my, my. English is so bad, eh? <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Kappa <laughs> <laughs> is a name that has for many years been synonymous with war photography. Okay. Born in Hungary in 1913 as Freeman and Renu, Kappa was forced to leave his native country after his involvement in an anti-government protest. Kappa had originally wanted to become a writer, but after his arrival in Berlin, had first found work as a photographer. He later left Germany and moved to France due to the rise in Nazis. He tried to find work as a freelance journalist, and it was here that he changed his name to Robert Kappa, mainly because he thought it would sound more American. In 1936, after the breakout of the Spanish Civil War, Kappa went to Spain, went to Spain, and it was here over the next three years that he built his reputation as a war photographer. It was here too in 1936 that he took one of his famous pictures, the death of loyalist soldier. One of Kappa's most famous quotes was, if your pictures aren't good enough, you're not close enough. And he took his attitude of getting close to the action to an extreme. His photograph, the death of loyalist soldier, is a prime example of this as, a, as Kappa captures that very moment, the soldier falls. However, many have questioned the authenticity of this photograph, claiming that it was staged. When World War II broke out, 
couple was in New York, but he was <coughs> soon back in Europe covering the war for Life magazine. Some of his All right, guys, most it's 920. famous work was created um, on Hopefully you've had a chance to finish uh, the first task. Don't worry about making mistakes. Okay, I'm more concerned about with the, um, first the way that you pronounce Maha and articulate the words, in the your intonation, your word Normandy. stress, your pauses. Kappa, Remember to use punctuation, commas, cameras. and periods, two for example, to, photographs in have, the first uh, to create of pauses the between the words. But All a right, mistake so in the try to the uh, of the create your online meeting in your teams. Try to record it was your the performance and then upload it to a folder called Week Six. However, Remember, we're in Week Six now. The style and uh, try not to confuse what we do now this week for Week Six with. Uh, well, some of you who are still working on your tasks from last week, from week they five. Claim okay, that so they were if any of the other groups have not uh, completed the task, you still can do so. Uh, please go ahead and make sure that the file for last week's performance, the performance task for, from last week is in week no five, dramatic. in the folder week five. He was a friend to many of Make sure Hollywood you send me a message if I still need to upload actors, your file to in YouTube. He fell in and love with the wife for today's activity, Austin. make sure that the so video file last appears the in week end of the six. War. And became the now the second text, of text his war memories. This, I'm sorry, the second task was, I would like to complete was, today at one time, is in Flipgrid. And Ingrid I've included Berger, the link here. Man. Uh, I've included Their the instructions. Let me share my screen. Finally ended in and to review the instructions for Flipgrid. To settle it's called in Three Hollywood Small and Things. And went off to Begin Turkey. by watching this video. This person talks about one habit that changed in his life. What I would like for you to think Kappa about are three habits group of photo that work for you, that three photo. habits that you're currently this doing as an online university student. To support and I would like for you to share those three things. And they're probably three the small things, right? But three things work. that are habits that you do every day um, and Kappa that help you be a better uh, a better student the of the English language. Okay, now this can be uh, a task or a goal of yours that is in general that helps you with your English proficiency or maybe it's uh, there are some habits or routines that you're currently doing as an online university student that relates specifically to a particular domain uh, in and speaking English, for <laughs> example, grammar, maybe war. it's something related to vocabulary, maybe it's something before. related to pronunciation, Kappa reading, French, writing, right? It can be any of the uh, English skills or dom domains. But what are three specific night. habits? Now, I'm not talking about habits like going to class every day, hospital. okay? They need to be camera, study habits that could be considered strategies but they're habits in that the you do them in a uh, on a frequent basis probably every day that the others have right three habits that relate to helping you develop as a speaker of english Kappa's this is what i'd like for you to think about when you're watching this video and here and you're creating and uploading your response it's not necessary uh, to create a mind map unless you want to okay if you do create a mind map if you think it helps uh, give you a, a better um, a response a better video then feel free to share that in your video but it's not required all right if you're comfortable and, and you have your ideas organized on how you want to present Perhaps Go right ahead and present them. If you want to write down a few points on a piece of paper or an outline just to organize again, just to help remind you capture. the order in which you want to uh, okay. express your ideas, well, then I encourage you to do that. How do Remember, you uh, think of the question so words. So okay, what are the habits? Easy, what are the three habits? Difficult. How do you... Uh, how do you I implement those habits? Why do you implement those is, habits? You see. Think about the question words also to think about mm -hmm. how I you want to organize easy. your ideas. I'm going to give you the rest mm -hmm. of class to do that. that. I, don't understand, I know we don't have a lot of time left, but go ahead and begin the task. 
Uh -huh. And of course, if you need extra time yes, to, ver, to complete either the first test that we did today more. or the uh, test what that we're going to do now, to then that's fine. No problem. I just try to catch up. <clears throat> if you're still trying to complete the task from last week as well, I want to get all caught times. up and get all of your grades uh -huh. uploaded uh, to Teacher Ease. And this week, I also want to update your grades in ASEMA, right, in the system. All right, any uh, questions, guys, about today's Flipgrid, which I've included as a link in our chat? Um, I think that also includes the code, which you should be able to see here on the screen. You'll probably need this code the first time that you enter into this uh, topic. Any questions, guys? No. No, teach. Thank you. All right. So let's go ahead and begin. Again, we don't have a lot of time. Go ahead and try to get as much uh, finished as you can. We'll come back around 940 to close the class and to answer any final questions or uh, concerns that you have. All right. So we'll come back at, at about 940. Okay. Okay, teacher.
Robert Kappa is a name that has for many years been similar with war fo photogram. Boris Ungari in 1930 as Fredman and Enderno Kappa was forced to leave his native country after his involvement in anti-government protests. Kappa had ori original he wanted to become green, but after his arrival in Berlin had fears on as a photographer, he later left Germany and moved to France to the racing Nazi. He tried to, to find work as a freelance journalist, and it was her that changed his name the Robert Kappa, mainly because his route is also more American. 1936, after the breakout of the war, Kappa went to Spain and it was here for over the next two years. He here to that he touched one of his that of following Valley. One of Kappa's most was and he thought his attitude of getting close at him. However, many have questioned the identity of his name. But it was When World War II broke out, Kappa was in New York, but he was soon back in Europe, covering the War for Life Amazing. Some of his most famous work was created on 6 June 1944, uh, when his warm as sure with the first assault on Obama bed beds in the D Day invasion of Normandy, Kappa armed only with two cameras, took more than one hundred photographs in the first hour of the landing, but uh, mistakes in the dark room during the drying of the field destroyed all but eight frames. It was the image for the farmers, however, that inspired the visual style of Steven Spielberg's Oscar winning mob saving creative rain. When Life Amazing published the photographs, they claimed that they were slightly of, of out of focus, and Kappa later used this as the title of of his autobiographical account of the work. Kappa's private life was no less dramatic. He has he was friend to many of Hollywood's direct art artists and actress in nine thousand nine hundred forty three.
he left in love with the wife of actor John Austin. His afraid with her last until the end of the war and become the subject of his war memories. He always he was at one time lover to address angry remind the relationship finally and in 9946 when he refused he refused to sending in Hollywood and went to went off to Turkey was among a group of photojournalists founded in the letters. This was a cooperative organization that to the help them to worship right Kappa went to document many other words. He never attempted to glamorous word sold, but to record the error. He once said the desire of many war photographers is to be put out of business. Kappa's landing, landing was living on through in a 1966. His brother, Connell, founded the International Fund for Concepting Photogram in his honor. There is also a Robert Kappa Go Medal, which is given to the photogram who published the best photography report from a book with evidence of exceptional courage, but perhaps is greatly legendary for all or the hunting imagines of the human subjects that he captured. Robert Carpais is a name that has for many years been synonymous with her photography. Robert Kappa is a name that has of many years been synonymous with war photography. Born in Hungary in 1913, as Freeman Henry Erno, Kappa was forced to leave his native country after his involvement in anti-government protest. Kappa had originally wanted to become a writer, but after his arrival in Berlin had first found work as a photographer. He later left Germany and moved to France due to the rising Nazis. He tried to find a work as a freelance journalist and it was here that he changed his name to Robert Kappa, mainly because he saw it would sound more American. In 1936, after the break of the Spanish 
Civil War, Kappa went fine, and it was here over the next three years that he built his reputation as a war photographer. It was here to in 1936 that, the, that he took on one of his most famous pictures, the death of a loyalist soldier. One of Kappa's most famous quotes was, if your pictures aren't good enough, Yuri not close enough and he toys attitude of getting close to the action to an extreme. His photography, the death of a loyalist soldier, is a prime example of this couple capture the very moment the soldier falls. However, many have questioned the authenticity of this photograph claiming that it was staged. When World War II broke out, Kappa was in New York, but he was soon back in Europe covering the War for Life magazine. Some of his most famous work was created on 60 June 1944 when he shone ashore with the first assault on Omaha, Omaha Beach in the day invasion of Normandy. Kappa armed only with two cameras took more than 100 photographs in the first hour of the landing, but a mistake in the dark room during the diary of the film destroyed all but eight frames. It was the images from these frames, however, that inspired the visual style of Steven Spielberg's Oscar-winning movie, Saving Private Ryan. When Life magazine publish, published the photographs, they claimed that they were slick slickly out of focus and Kappa later used this as the little of his autobi autobiographical account of the war. Kappa's private life was not less dramatic. He was friend of many of Hollywood's director, actor and actress. In 1943, he fell in love with the wife of actor John Austin. His affair with her lasted until the end of the war and became the subject of his war memories. He was out of the one-time lover to actress Ingrid um, Bregman. The relationship finally ended in 1946 when he re refused to settle in Hollywood and went to off Turkey. In 1947, Kappa was among a group of photojournalists who founded Magnum Photos. This was a cooperative organization set up to support photographers and help them to retain ownership of the copyright to their work. Kappa went on to document many other wars. He never attempted to clamorous, war to record the horror he owns a site, the desire of a new war photographer is to be good of all business. Kappa died as he had lived. After promising not to photograph any more wars, he accepted an assignment to go to Indochina to cover the first Indochina war. On May 25, 1954, Kappa was accompanying a French regiment when he left his jeep to take some photographs of the events stepped on a landmine. He was taken to an urban hospital, still clutching his camera, but was pronounced, pronounced dead on arrival. He left, be, he left behind him a testament to the horrors of war and a standard of for journalists that few others have been able to reach. Kappa's legacy has lived, lived on third and in 1966 his brother Cornell founded the International Fund or for concerning photography in his honor. 
There is also a Robert Kappa gold medal, which is given to the photographer who publishes the best photography reporting from a road with evidence or exceptional courage, but perfect his greatest legacy of all are the using images for the human strongness that he captured. Robert Kappa is a name that has for many years been synonymous with war photography. Born in Hungary in 1913 as Friedman Indre Erno Kappa was forced to leave his native country after his involvement in anti-government protest. Kappa had originally wanted to become a writer, but after his arrival in Berlin, had first found work as a photographer. He later left Germany and moved to France due to the rise in Nazism he tried to find work as freelance journalist and it was here that he changed his name to Robert Kappa, mainly because he thought it would sound more American. In 1936, after the breakout of the Spanish Civil War, Kappa went to Spain and it was here over the next three years that he built his reputation as a war photographer. It was here too in uh, 1936 that he took one of his most famous pictures, the death of the loyalist soldier. One of Kappa's most famous quotes was, if your pictures aren't good enough, you're not close enough. And he took his attitude of getting close to the action to an extreme. His photograph, The Dead of the Loyalist Soldier, is a prime example of his as Kappa captures the very moment uh, the soldier falls. However, many have questioned the authenticity of this photograph, claiming that it was staged. When World War II broke out, uh, Kappa was in New York, but he was soon back in Europe, covering the war for Life magazine. Some of his most famous work was created on 6 June 9, 1944, when he swam ashore with the first shoot on Om Omaha Beach in the D-Day invasion of Normandy. Kappa armed only with two cameras, T took more than 100 photographs in the first hour of the landing, but a mistake in the dark room during the drying of the film destroyed a but eight frames. It was the images from this frame However, that inspired the visual style of Seven Spielberg's Oscar-winning movie, Saving Pivot Ryan. When Life magazine published the photographs, they claimed that they were sickly out of focus, and Kappa later used this as the title of his autobiographical account of the war. Kappa's private life was no less dramatic. He was friend to many of Hollywood's directors, actors, and actresses. In 1943, he fell in love with the wife of actor John Austin. His affair with her lasted until the end of the war and became the subject of his war memoirs. He was at one time lover to actress Ingrid Bergman. Their relationship finally 
ended in 1946 when he refused to settle in Hollywood and went up to Turkey. In 1947, Kappa was among a group of photojournalists who found Magnum photos. This was a cooperative organization set up to support photographers and help them to retain ownership to the copyright to their work. Kappa went on the document of many other works. He never attempted to glamorize war thought, but to record the horror. He once said, the desire of any war photographer is to be put, put out of business. Kappa died as he had lived. After promising not to photograph any more wars, he accepted an assignment to go to Indochina to cover the first Indochina war. On May 25, 1954, Kappa was accompanying a French regiment when he left his jeep to take some photographs of the advance and stepped on a landmine. He was take, taken to a nervy hospital, still glutching his camera, but was pronounced dead on arrival. He left behind him a testament to the horrors of war and, he, and a standard of, for photojournalism that few others haven't been able to reach. Kappa's legacy has lived on troll and in 1966, his brother Cornell founded the International Fund for Concern Concerned Photography in his order. There is also a Robert Kappa gold medal, which is given to the photographer who published the best photographic reporting from abroad with evidence of exceptional courage. But perhaps his greatest leg legacy of all are the haunting images of the human struggles that he captured. Nineteen thirteen. Nineteen thirty. Thank you. Has Fernman and Ray Erno. Cap was forced forced to leave his native country after his involvement in anti-government protests. Kappa had originally wanted to become a agreed, but after his arrival in Berlin in Berlin had first found work as a photographer. He later left Germany and moved to France due to the rise in Nazism. He tried to find work as a freelance journalist and it was here that he changed his name to Robert Kappa, mainly because he thought it would sound more American. In 1936, after the breakout of the Spanish Civil, Civil War, Kappa went to Sp Spain and it was here over the next three years that he with his reputation has a War photographer. It was here to in 1936 that he took one of his most famous pictures, the deal of a loyalist soldier. One of Cap's most famous quotes was, "If you picture aren't good enough, you're not close enough," and he took. His attitude of getting close to the action to the extreme. His photograph 
the death of a loyalist soldier is a prime example of these Akapa captures. The very moment the soldier falls, however, many have questioned the authenticity of the this photograph, claiming that it was staged. Bueno, yo inicio con el 4. Y eh, del 4 al 6. When World War II broke out, Kappa was in New York, but he was soon back in Europe, covering the War for Life magazine. Some of his most famous work was created on 66 June 1980. 1444, when he swam ashore with the first assault on Omaha Beach in the day invasion invasion of Normandy. Kappa aimed only what two camer cameras took more than 100 photographs in the first of the, the leading. But a mistake, mistake in the dark room door, during the trying of the film destroyed all but eight frames. It was the image from these frames, however, that inspired the visual style of Seven Spielberg's, Spielberg's Oscar winning movie, Saving Private Ryan. When Life magazine published the photographs, they claimed that they were slightly tied out of focus, and Kappa later used this as the leader of his autobiographical account of the war. Kappa's private life was no less dramatic. He was friend to many of Hollywood's directors, actors, and actresses in 1943. Pardon. He fell in love with the wife of actor John Austin. He, his affair with her lasted until the end of the war and became the subject of his war memories. He was at one time love, lover the actress Ingrid Bergman. Their relationship finally ended in 1946 when he refused the serial in Hollywood and went off to Turkey. In 1917, Kappa was among a group of photojournalists who founded Magnum Photos. This Kappa, a cooperative organization set to support photo photographers and help them to retain ownership of the copyright to their, to their work. Kappa went on to document any other wars. He never attended to glamorize war though, but to record the honor, he once said, the design of any war photographer is to be put on business. Kappa died as he lived after promising not to photograph any more wars. He accepted on an assignment to go to Indochina to cover the first Indochina war on May 20. 1954, Kappa was accompanying a French regiment when he left his ship to take some photographs of the um, advance and stepped on a line mine. He was taken to a nervy hospital, still crushing his camera, but was pronounced dead on arrival. He left behind his a testament, the honors of war and a standard of photo journalists that few other have been able to reach. 
Capos legacy has lived on. So in 1966, his brother Comer founded the International Fund on Concert Photography in his honor. There is also a Robert Capa Gold Medal, which is given to the photographer who publishes the best photographic reporting for an album with evidence of exceptional courage. But perhaps his greatest legacy of all are the haunting images of the human struggles as he captured. Bunny. Robert Kappa is a name that has for many years been synonymous with war photography. Okay. So, now you, Monse. Now you. Now you. Come on. I want number three. <laughs> no. Start to read, please. Uh, okay. Um, Burn in Hungary in 1913 as Friedman and Re Erno Kappa was forced to leave his native country after his involvement in anti-government protest. Kappa had originally wanted to become a writer, but after his uh, arrival in Berlin had first found work as a photographer. He later left Germany and moved to France due to rise in Nazan. He tried to find work as a freelance journalist and it was here that he changed his name to Robert Kappa mainly because he thought it would sound more American. Okay, now me. Yeah. In 1936, after the breakout of the Spanish Civil War, Capa went to Spain, and it was here over the next three years that he built his reputation as a war photographer. It was here, too, in the 1936 that he took one of his most famous pictures, that of a loyalist soldier. At the one of Kappa's most famous quotes was, if your pictures aren't good enough, you're not close enough. And he took his attitude of getting close to the action to an extreme. He photographed the death of loyally soldier is a prime example of this as Kappa captures the very moment the soldier falls. However, many have questioned the authenticity of this photograph, claiming that it was staged. Okay, Maria, mm -hmm. you're next. When, when World War II broke out, Kappa was in New York, but he was soon back in Europe covering the war for Life magazine. Some of his most famous work was created on June 1944, when he swam ashore with the first assault on Omaha Beach in the D Day invasion of Normandy. Kappa, armed with only with two cameras, took more than 100 photographs in the first hour of the landing. In the dark, dark room during the drying of the film, destroyed all but eight frames. It was the images from these frames, however, that inspired the visual style of Steven Spielberg's Oscar-winning movie Saving Private Ryan. Life magazine published the photographs. They claimed that they were slightly out of focus, and Kappa later used this as a title of his autobiographical account of the war. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Me. Campos' okay. privy life was no less dramatic. He was friend to many of Hollywood's directors, actors, and actresses. 
In 1943, he fell in love with the wife of actor John Austin. His affair with her lasted until the end of the war and became the subject of his war memoirs. He was a one-time lover to actress Ingrid Bergen. Their relationship finally ended in 1946 when he refused to settle in Hollywood and went off to Turkey. In 1947, no, I want to say that one. Ah, <laughs> nah, Go ahead. Going. Pues. No, 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 keep going. Oh, gosh. In 1947, Kappa was among a group of photo, a photojournalist found, who founded um, Magnum Photos. This was a cooperative organization set up to support photographers and help them to retain ownership of the copyright to their work. Okay, Kappa went on to document many other wars. He never attempted to glamorize war though, but to record the horror. He once said, the desire of any war photographer is to be put out of business. Kappa died as he had lived after promising not to photograph any more war. He accepted uh, an assignment to go to Indochina, Indochina to cover the first Indochina War on May 25, 1944. 54, Kappa was accompanying a French regiment when he left his jeep to take some photographs of the advance and step on a land mine. He was taken to a nearby hospital, still clutching his camera, but was pronounced dead on arrival. He left behind him a testament to the horrors of war and the standard for photojournalism that few others have been able to reach. Kappa's legacy has lived told, and in 1966, his brother Cornell founded the International Fund for Concerned Photography in his honor. There is also a Robert Kappa gold medal which is given to the photographer who publishes the best photography, reporting from a role with evidence of exceptional courage. But perhaps his greatest legacy of all are the haunting image of the human struggles that he Pues quien esté en una laptop. <laughs> Bunny, you can start. So, okay. Who's going to start reading? Mm. Bunny. Robert Kappa is a name that has for many years been synonymous with war photography. Okay. So, mm. now you, Monse. Now you. Now you. Come on. I want number three. No. Start to read, uh, please. Okay. Um, born in Hungary in 1913 as Friedman and Erno Kappa, was forced to leave his native country after his involvement in anti government protest. Kappa had originally wanted to become a writer, but after his uh, arrival in Berlin, had first found work as a photographer. He later left Germany and moved to France due to rise in Nazan. He tried to find work as a freelance journalist, and it was here 
that he changed his name to Robert Kappa, mainly because he thought it would sound more American. Okay, now me. Yeah. In 1936, after the breakout of the Spanish Civil War, Kappa went to Spain, and it was here over the next three years that he built his reputation as a war photographer. It was here too in the 1936 that he took one of his most famous pictures, that of a loyalist soldier. One of Kappa's most famous quotes was, if your pictures aren't good enough, you're not close enough. And he took his attitude of getting close to the action to an extreme. His photograph, the death of loyally soldier, is a prime example of this as Kappa captures the very moment the soldier falls. However, many have questioned the authenticity of this photograph, claiming that it was staged. Okay, Maria, mm -hmm. you're next. When, when World War II broke out, Kappa was in New York, but he was soon back in Europe covering the war for Life magazine. Some of his most famous work was created on 6th June 1944 when he swam ashore with the first assault on Omaha Beach in the D-Day invasion of Normandy. Kappa, armed with, only with two cameras, took more than 100 photographs in the first hour of the landing. In the dark, dark room during the drying of the film, destroyed all but eight frames. It was the images from these frames, however, that inspired the visual style of Steven Spielberg's Oscar winning movie Saving Private Ryan. Life magazine published the photographs. They claimed that they were slightly out of focus and Kappa later used this as a title of his autobiographical account of the war. Can you see it? Me. Kappa's okay. private life was no less dramatic. He was friend to many of Hollywood's directors, actors, and actresses. In 1943, he fell in love with the wife of actor John Austin. His affair with her lasted until the end of the war and became the subject of his war memoirs. He was a one-time lover to actress Ingrid Bergen. Their relationship finally ended in 1946 when he refused to settle in Hollywood and went off to Turkey. In 1947, no, I want to say that one. Ah, Percy. <laughs> Nah, Go ahead. Going. Pues. No, 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 keep going. Oh. In 1947, Kappa was among a group of a, a photojournalist found who founded um, Magnum Photos. This was a cooperative organization set up to support photographers and help them to retain ownership of the copyright to their work. Okay, Kappa went on to document many other wars. He never attempted to glamorize war, though, but to record the horror. He once said, the desire of any war photographer is to be put out of business. Kappa died as he had lived after promising not a photograph any more wars, he accepted uh, an assignment to go to Indochina 
and the China to cover the first Indochina war on May 25, 1944. Um, Capo was accompanying a French regiment when he left his jeep to take some photographs of the advance and step on a land mine. He was taken to a nearby hospital still clutching his camera, but was pronounced dead on arrival. He left behind him a testament to the horrors of war and the standard for photojournalism that few others have been able to reach. Kappa's legacy has lived told, and in 1966, his brother Cornell founded the International Fund for Concerned Photography in his honor. There is also a Robert Kappa Gold Medal, which is given to the photographer who publishes the best photography, reporting from a role with evidence of exceptional courage. But perhaps his greatest legacy of all are the haunting image of the human struggles that he captured. So we have finished now. Yeah, we're done because um, yes, we just had to read it. Um, but until what time do we have to go back to the call? Nine twenty. Oh, so we still have twelve thirteen. Should minutes. I stop the recording? Um, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Pues quien esté en una laptop. Ya está. Ok. Vane, you can start. Ok. Who's going to start reading? Vane. Robert Capa is a name that has for many years been synonymous with war photography. So, now you, Monse. Now you. Now you. Come on. I want number three. <laughs> no. Start to read, uh, please. Okay. Um, born in Hungary in 1913 as Friedman Andre Erno Kappa, was forced to leave his native country after his involvement in anti-government protest, Kappa had originally wanted to become a writer, but after his uh, arrival in Berlin, had first found work as a photographer. He later left Germany and moved to France due to rise in Nazan. He tried to find work as a freelance journalist, and it was here that he changed his name to Robert Kappa, mainly because he thought it would sound more American. Okay, now me. Yeah. In 1936, after the breakout of the Spanish Civil War, Kappa went to Spain, and it was here over the next three years that he built his reputation as a war photographer. It was here too in the 1936 that he took one of his most famous pictures, that of a loyalist soldier. One of Kappa's most famous quotes was, if your pictures aren't good enough, you're not close enough. And he took his attitude of getting close to the action to an extreme. His photograph the death of loyally soldier is a prime example of this as Kappa captures the very moment the soldier falls. However, many have questioned 
the authenticity of this photograph, claiming that it was staged. Okay, Maria, mm -hmm. you're next. When, when World War II broke out, Kappa was in New York, but he was soon back in Europe covering the war for Life magazine. Some of his most famous work was created on his June 1944, when he swam ashore with the first assault on Omaha Beach in the D-Day invasion of Normandy. Kappa, armed with only with two cameras, took more than 100 photographs in the first hour of the landing. In the dark, dark room during the drying of the film, destroyed all but eight frames. It was the images from these frames, however, that inspired the visual style of Steven Spielberg's Oscar winning movie Saving Private Ryan. Life magazine published the photographs. They claimed that they were slightly out of focus, and Kappa later used this as a title of his autobiographical account of the war. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Me. Kappa's okay. privy life was no less dramatic. He was friend to many of Hollywood's directors actors and actresses. In 1943, he fell in love with the wife of actor John Austin. His affair with her lasted until the end of the war and became the subject of his war memoirs. He was a one-time lover to actress Ingrid Bergen. Their relationship finally ended in 1946 when he refused to settle in Hollywood and went off to Turkey. In 1947, no, I want to say that one. Ah, Percy. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Go ahead. Keep going. Pues. No, 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 keep going. Oh, in 1947, Kappa was among a group of a photojournalist found who founded um, Magnum Photos. This was a cooperative organization set up to support photographers and help them to retain ownership of the copyright to their work. Okay, Kappa went on to document many other wars. He never attempted to glamorize war though, but to record the horror. He once said, the desire of any war photographer is to be put out of business. Kappa died as he had lived after promising not to photograph any more wars. He accepted uh, an assignment to go to Indochina and the China to cover the first and the China war on May 25, 1944. Kappa was accompanying a French regiment when he left his jeep to take some photographs of the advance and step on a landmine. He was taken to a nearby hospital, still clutching his camera, but was pronounced dead on arrival. He left behind him a testament to the horrors of war and the standard for photojournalism that few others have been able to reach. Kappa's legacy has lived told, and in 1966, his brother Cornell founded the International Fund for Concerned Photography in his honor. There is also a Robert Kappa gold medal 
which is given to the photographer who publishes the best photography, reporting from a role with evidence of exceptional courage. But perhaps his greatest legacy of all are the haunting image of the human struggles that he captured. Robert Kappa is a name that has for many years been synonymous with war photography. Born in Hungary in 1913 as Friedman Andre Erno, Kappa was for was forced to leave his native country after his involvement in anti-government protests. Kappa had originally wanted to become a writer, but after his arrival in Berlin, had first found work as a photographer. He later left Germany and moved to France due to the risk in Nazis. He tried to find a work, he tried to find work as a freelance journalist and it was here that, that he changed his name to Robert Kappa, mainly because he thought, uh, he thought it would sound more American. Oh, yeah. In 1936, after the breakout of the Spanish Civil War, Kappa went to Spain and it was here over the next three years that the, he built his reputation as a war photographer. It was here too in 1936 that he took one of his most famous pictures, the death of the loyalist soldier. One of Kappa's most famous quotes was, if your pictures aren't good enough, you're not close enough. And he took his attitude of getting close to the action that, to an extreme. His photograph Mm, the death of the loyalist soldier is a prime example of this as Kappa captures the very moment the soldier falls. However, many have questioned the authenticity of this photograph, claiming that it was staged. Mm, when World War II broke out, Kappa was in New York, but he was soon back in Europe, converting the War for Life magazine. Some of his most famous work was created in 6 June 1944, when he swam ashore with the first assault on Omaha Beach in the D-Day invasion of Normandy. Kappa, armed only with two cameras, took more than 100 photographs in the first hour of the landing. But a mistake in the dark room during the trying of the film destroyed all but eight frames. It was the image from these frames, however, that inspired the visual style of Steven Spielberg, Oscar winning movie Saving Private Ryan. When Life Magazine published the photographs, they claimed that they were slightly out of focus. And Kappa later used this as the title of his autobiographical account of the war. Kappa's, no. Kappa's yeah. private life. ¿Cómo? Ahora aguanta. Achis. Ah, también eres tú, ¿verdad, Alexia? Sí. No manches, perdón. Sí, continúa, continúa. Ah, ok. Siento. Ok. Kappa's private life was no less dramatic. He was friend to many Hollywood directors, actors, and actresses. In 1943, he fell in love with the wife of actor John Austin. His affair with her latest until the end of the war and became the subject of his war memories, memoirs. He was at the one time the lo time lover to actress Ingrid Bergman. The relationship finally ended in 1946 when he refused to settle in Hollywood and went off to Turkey.
אבל... In 1947, Kappa was among a group. Kappa was among a group of photojournalists who founded Magnum Photos. Uh, this was a cooperative organization set up to set up to support photographers and help them to retain owners ownership of the copyright to their work. Kappa went on to the no, I spelled it ah. Kappa went on to document many other wars. He never attempted to glamorize war two, but to record the horror. <laughs> he once said, the desire of any war photographer is to be put out of business. Mm, Kappa died as he had lived after promising not to photograph any more wars. He accepted an assignment to go to Indochina to cover the first Indochina war. On May 25, 1954, Kappa was accompanying a French regiment, reg regiment <laughs> when he left his jeep to take some photographs of the advance of step on a landmine. He was taken to an nearby hospital still clutching his camera, but was pronounced dead on arrival. He left behind him a testament to the horrors of war and a standard for photojournalists that few others have been able to reach. Kappa's legacy has lived on through an end 1966. His brother Colonel founded the International Fund of Concern Photography in his honor. There is also a Robert Kappa Gold Medal, which is given to the photographer who publishes the best photographic reporting from a board with evidence for exceptional courage. But fair perhaps, his greatest legacy of all are the haunting image of the human struggles that he captured. <laughs> yeah, Kabe. Okay, stay very good, eh? very good. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you want to pronounce again some words in order for you to know how to pronounce it. Eh? Can you repeat it again? I didn't hear you. Yeah, I don't know if you want to pronounce uh, some words or some of the words of the text in order for you to know how to pronounce it or how to pronounce them properly. Uh, so you said that if we want to to pronounce some words that we don't know or maybe? Yeah. To, ah, okay. Yeah, I think it, no. it's a good okay. idea. So for example, how do you pronounce uh, oh, the word like uh, in the number eight in the uh -huh. second line, the second line of pigment or something like this? Or how would, how would you pronounce the word uh, after accepted and, uh, and then a pigment or something like this? In, in the number in the number eight in the second line you you mean <laughs> into china <laughs> uh, no <laughs> number the paragraph number eight uh-huh okay yes the second the second line yes after accepted and the word that uh that is next to a segment yeah a segment uh, uh, uh <laughs> sorry i i i think that was in the china because you said after accepted and a segment and then you said no pues to go no porque pues no muy fácil entonces dije no pues in the china <laughs> but think that okay. yeah, it's it
Uh, how do you pronounce this word? Eh? How do you pronounce this word? A. Eh. This word <laughs> that, I, that I wrote at the end. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, Avíseme, mijo. Avíseme. Uh, ay, jole, siempre se me dificulta. Um, I think it's... Uh, ay, no, me da vergüenza. Dígalo primero y luego ya lo digo yo. A ver, yo pienso que es... Soft. Ay, no, es que está raro. Yo, I think it's... No. ¿Tú? ¿Cuál? No, so, no. Algo así. Soft like that. Ah. Mirna, Mirna, do you want to say it? ¿De cuál dijeron? Perdón, me... me... Adam, write it till the end. To the end. Yeah. Um, no sé tú. So? <laughs> no sé, I don't know. It is pronounced though. The so. though. Oh, teacher Adam. Because maybe I'm not that good uh reader because even in spanish i uh make make, uh, make a lot of mistakes but but, it's okay uh, it's I, okay we are I humans think, i think in pronunciation i can help if you want thank you love you thank you <laughs> love you ah uh, yeah wait, wait. i think i have uh, another one okay I have another one. Woo! A ver. Veamos. Veamos. How. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, ay, ay. Espérame. How do you pronounce this word? Glamorize. Adam? Glamorize. Yeah, I think I don't know that. I think that too. I don't know. I I've never heard that word before. Mm -hmm. So I think it it sounds like that. Like that. So, um, the other one. Okay, this one. In color. Well, let me find that hard word. Uh -huh. Lo siento, me estoy durmiendo. Yeah, me too. Una vez que estaba en llamada con, con Chuy y con Diana, y, y me quedé dormida. <risa> bueno, no una vez, la verdad, fueron varias. Me quedé wow. dormida y me desperté porque Chuy me estaba llamando. Ay, sí, esta sí me la sé, ¿cómo no? La teacher, la teacher Wendy la dice cada rato. The next two, uh, two words. A ver. I, I pronounce like this. Mood and strategy. Hoy. ¿Qué va? The same. Move to strategy. And who is missing? Was Mirna or Alexia? Mirna. Mirna. Yeah. What? <laughs> the last two words, please. Um, Mood and strategy. Yes. Yeah. The the last one strategy. I I know I know how to pronounce it because Wendy all the classes is is like strategy strategy strategy. Entonces es como. Yeah. And, and and she says so much. Uh, it's up to you. Ah, uh, it's up to you. Yes, yes. I I I, I got another one. Ooh. Lo siento, parezco drogada, pero no, ¿eh? Así soy yo normalmente. Uh, ay, sí, 
se escribe así? Sí. Uh, like, you have a problem? This one. Mm, struggles? Yes, struggles. <laughs> struggles, struggles. Struggles. Uh, Adam, do you know what is what the struggles mean? Like I know, but I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, I think it's um, when you are in. Oh, yeah, when you have some problems with something, it, you are struggling. Uh, you have some struggles uh, with with that thing or about that thing. That thing. That thing. Uh, yeah, it's something like that. I, I don't know. I know it, but I struggle. I, I heard that, song, that word before in a One Direction song. <laughs> it ah, was the, the only time that I heard that, that word. So it's something like, yeah, struggle. Uh, but I don't know the meaning correctly. Maybe, yeah, it's something like that. Thank you, Dan. You will go to heaven. And for example, it would be great if um, I don't know if you have entering to uh, you have entered to uh, Cambridge Dictionary, and yeah. you know that, and you know that uh, in Cambridge you have the definition, of, yeah, word and the definition, and and I like that because uh, it is. Uh, easy definition and, and it is not uh, hard, uh, really hard. Yeah, I, I, I entered to Cambridge, Cambridge Dictionary too because if I enter to, to uh, the traductor, Google traductor, it's like not too much viable. So I go to this and, and yeah, I go to. No, it, it got a the meaning too, so it's too much better. Yeah, because the translator uh, sometimes is not uh, it's not accurately accurate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. A ver, a ver, a ver, a ver. Oh, I can find another. No manches, I'm just saying you. Y luego que, ¿cómo durmieron? ¿Bien? Eh, pues bien. Pues sí, más o menos. Ay, Adán, yo no le tengo miedo a la muerte, ¿eh? Why? Infrastructure. Oh. <laughs> no mention. Infrastructure. Yeah. yeah, actually, stress is on the on the infrastructure in the third syllable. Eh? So, so you are right. The stress is on the third syllable. You are stressing the word on the third syllable. It's true. It's stressing. Uh, you know, stress. Ay, es que no te escucho. A ver, dímelo en español, por favor. Ok, cuando, cuando, ah, ¿cómo se dice eso? Cuando haces algo como más grave, en, no, más, más fuerte en español. Por ejemplo, si digo infraestructura, ¿dónde pongo el acento? Infraestructura. Infraestructura. En la tú. Infra no. Infraestructura. Ah, bueno, pero en inglés o en español. Ahí va, ahí va. A ver, no, a ver espera. Infraestructura. Pues yo digo que en, en, en infraestructura. Cierto. Y en inglés, infraestructura. No sé. Como en la ya, true. Pues, ya. Pues eso en... fue lo que dije, me dijiste que no. No, sí, sí, sí. O sea, primero te dije que no y luego reflexioné y te dije, ah, oh, no, sí. <laughs> no, Adam. Yeah, but how do you pronounce the then these words? Ah, uh, the other girls, but no, I, I say it. 
Uh, structure. Infrastructure. Structure. <laughs> structure. <laughs> this U, it is not like, it is not pronounced like U. It is A. Uh, uh, uh -huh. Infrastructure. 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 Oh. Pues tenemos que hablar, de, o sea, para hablar inglés tenemos que hablar medios créditos, ¿eh? Acuérdense. Uh -huh. Créanse amos y dueños del universo. Y no, no jala. So, infrastructure. Por eso. Infrastructure. A ver, estoy buscando otra palabra. Me duele mi pata. Uh, and I don't know if you want to write uh, some words that uh, you that you seem no that you find uh, difficult mm. to pronounce. A ver, estas esta, these words. Well, I don't know if the girls want to. Authenticity. 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 I will try, but I think it's authenticity. Yeah, mm -hmm. authenticity. Because I, I don't know, but, but say it like that, like on um, mm, it it doesn't sa sound very well, but I don't know. It, it sounds much better, like Adam said, authenticity. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. But if you want to look more British, you can say authentic, authenticity. Ah, sí, sí. With a T. Próximamente los invitaré a mi boda con un británico. I hope. Oh, oh, con un europeo de por allá, pero que se venga a vivir aquí. Yo irme a vivir allá no. A British from Scotland or from Wales or from... England. Look, I, I, I like England so much like, I, I like English you know yeah. but okay. if if, if uh, someone from Scotland or someone from Ireland or someone from Wales Gales 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 uh, well well uh, well okay. uh, it doesn't matter the first one if it's kind of be it's good, it's handsome, good. and yeah, come, come, come with me. I was going, uh, I was going to to ask that if maybe if that person is is not not handsome, is ugly. Uh, I think I think uh, the personality it's first that face, but uh, I said it I said it yesterday. I can't, I can see the feelings and the soul and that things. Uh, the first uh, insta that I meet that person. So, uh, well, if I see some someone handsome, I, ooh, and and if that person hands is handsome but is kind and that things too, it's a cap. But if I meet <laughs> someone who is not handsome and I know it know him well that things and it's kind in that <laughs> maybe maybe but i don't know and to be honest to be honest it is actually uh, uh, the first thing the first thing uh what we look at first yeah, yeah. That first and someone and cute i i don't like the idea that the the men's are like searching the 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 girl or the woman that who is pretty and good body and that things not all the bands i'm not este, saying for all the men's but uh, too much many many men are like that and i am just like why uh, we 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 don't uh, it doesn't matter for me like a man like he's chubby or something like that but they, no, 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 I know. Yeah. Oh, qué complicados son los vatos. 
you're right. And sometimes women. Eh? Ah, ah, ah. No, no. Mira, mira, aguántame. Aquí pusiste men y man. Men es cuando son muchos hombres y man es cuando es solo uno. Exactly. Mira, yo, yo dije men. You said, you said men. 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 Man, men. Men. A ver, espera. Es personally. Men, man. Man, man. Es assault. So. Ah, uh, woman y uh, woman. Woman, women. And women. Women. Men. Women. Yeah. Women. Woman. Na, 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 na. Woman. Esa canción es una canción de mi poderosísimo Harry Styles. Escúchenla. Es más, escuchen todas las canciones de Lejar, no nada más esta. Ah, ah, ah. A ver, estoy buscando otra. Oigan, lamento interrumpir, pero ¿a qué hora dijo el profe que debíamos volver? La verdad no dio horario, pero... ¿Qué no dijo 9.20? ¿Quién sabe? No, no sé. que ahorita publicó? Sí, sí. sí, no, según yo sí era como eso. A ver, Ay, espera. Sí. A ver. Second task for today. Ay, no. ¿Cómo que tenemos que poner otra cosa en Flipgrid? No quiero ver mi cara toda horrible. Pero a ver. Second test right. for today, three small things. So I think I think we have to come back. Yeah, yes. maybe. Yeah, so it was yeah. very kind to talk with you. I love you all. And we hope uh, no, I hope to be your friends. Los <laughs> TQM se me cuidan, desayunan. Sí. Y me avisan, ya desayuné, así. Arre. Dejen de grabar, primero que nada.